Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 2 episode number 1 and 2 reaction. Alright, um, the previous two episodes it was the end of book 1 and we were at uh, you know like the final battle Tarlok and Amon. Uh, Tarlok had already lost you know like his bending but you know, while we're going to rescue him we get a huge revelation that Tarlok and Amon are brothers and uh, Yakon was their father and you know how like you know that's why even Amon knows blood bending and he's actually like you know taking uh, bending away by using some type of blood bending trick and you know all that stuff we got to know and uh, that was like one of the biggest revelations and Tarlok seemed a little bit changed he was you know he he started lamenting about how he went to uh, like you know on the same path that his dad walked and now Amon is also walking the same path all that stuff and uh, yeah that was episode uh, 11 episode 12 was the final episode where uh, Korra actually loses his her bending uh, Amon takes it away and um like that that moment i thought like how is this going to like you know like go how are we going to go forward from here on even though she learned uh, air bending at that moment but it was insane so like you know like because i thought that taking bending away means he won't be able to get back bending just like uh you know ang took away from ozai uh that was that so you know like that was something but then like you know like uh, uh, in front of everyone amon was revealed to be a bloodbender and uh, you know like he was then like you know like he he goes back to uh, tarlock tries to run away with tarlock but tarlock uh, actually like you know commits um like you know kills himself and his brother at the same time and uh, yeah that's how everything ends so that was the end and uh, Korra gets back his bending by um, like um, Aang comes in and Aang just returns the bending to her. And uh, also another thing happened as Korra and Mako are together now I guess now I don't know what's happening. I feel really bad for um, <laughs> like you know Asami like I don't know like what probably went through her like you know like she, she just liked Mako and look at what it brought her. So I actually am like, you know, like I, I should be happy for Mako and uh, Korra, but I'm actually not. I'm actually sad for uh, um, Asami. That's basically what happened. Like, it's weird. <laughs> but anyways, let's get started. This is uh, the first episode of book number two. So yeah, let's see what happens. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the time right here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three. Two, one, go. <clears throat> I wonder what's going to happen now. Like, the main enemy is gone, so there are three more seasons left. What, what are they going to show now? Six months. Oh. Oh, great. Oh, okay, okay. It's the Southern Water Tribe. Hmm. <laughs> Don't scare him. Oh my God. This guy's having fun. What is that? Is that a squid? Okay. Damn. Rebel spirit. Oh, pro bending, okay. Okay. Rhino lions. Good <laughs> Babu. <laughs> yes. All right. Wait, what? Wait, where's Marco and... 
Wait, what? Wait, what happened? Oh, I think they're like... They're like chasing down criminals or something? Wait, who's that? Who's that in the bike? Who's this? Oh, damn. Is that Marco? Yeah, I think, okay. I'm unable to recognize him because of his helmet. Oh, damn. Woo. <laughs> wow, the animation. Okay. All right. Criminal apprehended or criminals. No, wait, who's that? Huh. Is that Marco? Am I? There's Asami. <laughs> oh, damn. <clears throat> South Pole, the Southern Water Tribe. Oh boy, I feel bad for her. Like, what even? Where's Cora? We've not seen her. Oh, there she is. Ah! Yo. Look at her. Look at her airbending. Wait, she can go to Avatar State just like that now? Is that, is that Boomy? I think that's the that's Boomy, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, Tenzin! <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> As always, Tenzin. I don't think so. <laughs> Unretire. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the guy. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're going on a journey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh. Oh. We're going back to the water. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's retired, you know. Oh, damn, this is gonna be good. Wait, Assam is also going, isn't he? Oh, yeah, that was Marco. Wait, she, he's in the police now? Oh, okay. Oh, that's why he was not pro-bending. Oh, God, that's... Oh boy.
Um, Uh, but where are we going to walk? This is in the middle of the... <laughs> Alright, we are here. Is, is this? Yeah, there we go. Wait, who's this? Kaya. Wait, who's this? Aunt! Oh! Aang's daughter? Wait, oh, this is Korra's dad. Oh my god, I I'm unable to recognize all these people. Because we don't even know them. Wait, who's this? Chief of the Northern Water Tribe. Okay, this this guy. <laughs> Bowling. Ah. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Oh, brother! Wait, that means it's like uncle? Wow, the, the family tree is like huge. What's happening? Oh my god. Oh, this, is this guy like... <laughs> Come on, leave him alone. Also, oh, he's like a person who's like traditional and okay. Oh yeah, that's that scene in the beginning. Come on. Um, okay. Varric. Oh my god, Bolin is obviously going to say something. He's obviously going to say something. Wait, what's happening? Um, okay. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> okay, Bolin. Bolin? Oh, wait, what? Um. Oh, damn. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this guy's. <clears throat> I think he's more interested in bowling than. Oh. Whoa. Oh, this is like a... Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh. Wait, who? Wait, what? What's happening?
He he's not interested. Up. Um. Oh, wow! This guy. <laughs> nice, I guess. Wow, this guy is a a but. <laughs> no, no, please. That's not how business goes. <laughs> what the hell? Hmm. Hmm. True. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Okay, I think that's a bit too far. Hmm. I think we need to do something about that first. Like... He doesn't care. This guy. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Wow. That's, that's kind of cool. Yay. <laughs> um, do it somewhere else, please. Oh, these two. <coughs> oh god. Oh my god. Uh, let, let, let me guess, he's going to, like, you know, he's, he's going to, oh, <laughs> he's going to talk to the wrong one. Okay. Oh, that, that's good. Wait, what? Um, ball in run. Ball in run. Ball in. Run. <laughs> Wait, what is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> what the <laughs> Oh my god. What type of game is this? Okay. Oh. <coughs> oh my god, Cora, come on, don't start now. Oh great. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. What what's wrong with her? Why is she so like like you know? 
Oh god. I feel okay, I'll talk about this later, you know. <coughs> oh, someone's here? Oh my god. The spirits or something? Oh my god, something's happening. Yeah. What the? That, is that a spirit? Oh. Yo. Whoa. Just whacked her away. Oh god. Come on, use your bending. What, what are you waiting for? Okay, there you go. Damn, this thing's fast. Yo, this thing is fast. <laughs> oh, is that yeah? The score is dead, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still not accustomed with their faces. Oh boy. Yo. Wow, this thing is strong. It's like fast and... Oh! Oh no, he's, she's going to the after state. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh my god. Like, I thought the Avatar state was supposed to be extremely strong. Like, what's happening? Like, we, we're accustomed with Aang's Avatar state. It's like something out of the world and, like... Whoa, what's happening? Oh, this guy. And forgot his, his name. Oh my god. Wow, what was that? Like he purified them or something. Or calmed it down. Yeah, oh, wait, what? Hmm. What you what is wrong with this? what? Oh my god, what is wrong with her? What, what is happening? What happened to her? In like one episode, not one, but six months. Great. What happened to her in these six months? I'm... I'm really... She wasn't like this in... The, the...
True. <laughs> oh my god well there you go now have your happy time training with no no what no obviously not what is wrong with her i don't understand no it's not oh my god marco's just a yes man now marco's just a yes man No, it's, it was not. I don't think so. Great. This, this is another Tarlock. Um, wow. <laughs> One Tarlock goes, another Tarlock comes in. Great. Wow, I'm loving this. I'm loving the first episode. This was... This was great. <laughs> I don't know what I'm... You know who I'm the most mad at? I'm the most mad at Korra now. Like, what is happening? What happened to her in the six months? Did, did she completely go... Like crazy, like in the six months, like what is wrong? I felt like we actually, like you know, uh, we actually crossed this whole thing. This kind, this thing kind of happened with Cora before, you know, where she was like, "Oh, Tenzin, you know, like you, you, you're not teaching me stuff. This, that, I want to do this, I want to do that." And I, and I thought we actually went past that in season one. Cora actually understood, and then she even up, like you know, apologized apologized to Tenzin Tenzin also apologized like that was like the first two episodes or something like that that happened I thought we were well past that and now she's like back to her old self again like what's happening like she's supposed to be I don't know like her character is, is supposed to develop it's like she can like in, in in the end of season one her character developed immensely and then now she's back to the starting point again like what happened I don't understand this this episode was I I don't know what to say about this like what is wrong with her oh my god great wow and and I don't know what happened to Marco like he's like the yes man now like whatever Cora is saying he's like yes 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 and like I guess like what else would he even do like in that in that scene in 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 the, in the boat he was like what am i supposed to do then like you know like i'm supporting you you're, you're not liking that either like oh my god i don't know i i don't know how to feel about this like this episode like went in a very weird direction like i was thinking like i don't know like something else like you know maybe like some uh, other threat like some other threat is coming we know that like that whole thing with the spirits and all that stuff so i don't know i i I, th I thought like yeah she's going to like you know like now that she's going to master all the uh elements and like you know like tenzin Korra, they're going to get more stronger more training and then probably another enemy is going to come in and we're going to fight that this and that i was not expecting a drama filled episode like what is this like she she starts getting pissed off about how like you know she doesn't want to do airbending anymore she has already mastered it like like i i don't know she she's like a whimsical kid like cora i feel like in this episode like she she thinks that she has already mastered airbending and she's like oh i i'm 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 the master of it i i know what like no, i know everything i want to uh, do water bending even though tensing is telling her that no you need to master air bending first we are already on our way so let us just continue you know and then obviously like we'll have time to um, like you know master uh, water bending you know what what is the actual uh, you know like the, the problem here the problem is that in avatar the last airbender ang was actually in a, in the middle of a war he had to grow up quickly he had to mature quickly and it, it was a requirement because everything like you know like like he was constantly fighting all uh like uh, uh wait what was <laughs> I, I got so riled up i actually forgot ozai ozai i actually for forgot his name <laughs> Like, um, Aang actually had to fight Ozai all the time and like, you know, like, he, she, he was, he had to constantly improve. Otherwise, 
like there, there was no way like nowhere to go while here since it is peace time Cora Cora can do whatever the hell she wants to she she just like you know like and she she's she's actually talented you know like unlike like Ang 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 had even like, even the Ang was talented I feel like Cora is a lot more talented than Ang but but her attitude is very wrong in my opinion like it's like whatever she feels like she's supposed to be doing she she just does that she doesn't care about what others tell her to do like obviously Tenzin here is like the more experienced person even his her dad is telling her that Cora listen like you're you're like you know, Tenzin's training you complete the training like then do whatever you want to like you know like no need to change teachers she she's not listening and I feel like this this guy is another Tarlock like the way Tarlock is so pushy Tarlock was so pushy in, you know in season one that's what annoyed me about Tarlock he was so pushy he was such a like you know like you know very like manipulative and everything and you know what was good in season one Korra actually did not trust Tarlock from the beginning but here it's not going that way he he's actually trusting this guy now I don't know who this guy is it seems like he's a nice guy up until now but he's a bit pushy so I don't know if this guy is going to be like the main antagonist or something or I don't know like some kind of like you know enemy but if he turns out to be another enemy like Tarlock then then I don't know what else to say like this is like going the same direction that season one went through but who knows he he i think he he's not like the main bad guy he's probably like one of those characters you know who are just uh, like you know he's he's so like you know focused on he's so focused on uh the traditions and everything that he's probably like you know very rigid and very um like old-fashioned type of a person who thinks that oh this is the way you should do it there is no other way to do something else this is the only way and he said something in the end about i have plans for you this and that like he he seems like 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 his his way of doing stuff is kind of similar to tarlock where he like you know pushes someone to do something and manipulates that person and i think it's something like that because like you know what really made like you know made my uh, like, me weirded about him what fact is that the, that scene where um, where uh, Tenzin says that oh we're going to go to the different uh, you know the different air temples he says that oh you cannot learn anything over there he just blatantly denies the fact that you you need to like you know like go to the air temples and like you know learn something probably some more advanced techniques or something else he just blatantly denies that he's like oh you can't like you know learn anything from the air temples we are going to teach you what how to be like that really annoyed me like how dare you like you know ang ang was supposed to be like you know like the last airbender and like ang ang was one of the best and you are what he's doing his bed is blatantly denying ang's way like you know the the way ang well went like ang was a master airbender and he's actually denying that he not denying that but he's actually saying that oh you cannot learn anything from airbending we are going to teach you everything like that's how he went and that's what actually annoys me because obviously we have spent so much time with ang you know and the way he kind of said that really annoyed me i was like what the hell how what do you know about airbending but anyway that's just my you know like what can i say i'm sure that's probably uh, my uh, like you know favoritism is that a word like talking because obviously we have spent so much time with ang and he just said something like that that probably pissed me off i'm sure that probably pissed off quite a few people as well since we have spent so much time with ang and he just was like oh you cannot learn some anything from the air temples but yeah Oh my god, this this episode went very wrong. Okay, first of all, a few things happened here. Number one, uh, Marco is in the police force. Uh, Cora is still training at the beginning, as we see. Uh, Asami is trying to like you know uh, bring back the future industries, you know, even though his her dad is in prison. And Bolin, Bolin is just like you know the thing that he does best. He's he's just having fun. <laughs> That's Bolin. <laughs> Oh boy, and we do see like Marco, uh, Cora, uh, Sami has been affected by the whole thing with Marco quite a bit. 
and I'm I'm really like you know I'm I'm, I'm quite sad about that like. I don't know. I, f- I feel like the whole thing with Bolin, Bolin was able to take the whole thing very lightly. And that's why I'm not feeling that bad for Bolin. But Assam is not like that, you know. Assam is kind of bummed out. We can see that. So, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm more interested in uh, Bolin and Asami than Korra and Mako at this point. Like, I feel like that's what's happening. Like, I don't know. Like what? Like we we're supposed to like the main characters. I like them. I'm not saying that I don't like Korra. Like I I really liked Korra up until the end of season one. But this episode really like you know bring brought down my whatever you call it. Like you know my respect and everything. Not respect, but I know like she's a kid. But still like you know like the way she behaved at that point. Like you know and obviously you guys must know if you're watching this. I don't really like Mar- Marco that much. So like this is what's basically happening. I'm I'm more interested in Bolin and Asami at this point than Marco and Korra. Like is, is this how th- this is supposed to go? I don't know. Like I I actually feel bad for Asami. I'm I'm very happy about Bolin. Bolin's like the 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 best character in this series. Like Bolin uh, Tenzin as well. Tenzin I also really like Tenzin. Uh, even though he's a bit <laughs> kind of you know like <laughs> Yes, Tenzin is just like Katara. I I can see that, like you know, like Tenzin is just like Katara. Like now that I think about it, and that's probably why I really like him. Like you know, like Katara, even though she was kind of you know like naggy, Tenzin is also naggy, but still, like you know, like that's 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 something that he does uh, because he wants the best for Korra. And and yeah, and <coughs> okay, like. <laughs> Okay, another thing we see, we, we meet the three, uh, like, you know, I think Gaia, that's another, I think another one of Aang's child. So there are three siblings, Gaia, Bumi, and Tenzin, as far as I could gather. So Tenzin is just like Katara. Bumi is kind of like Sokka, in my opinion. Sokka and, and, and the original Bumi, you know, like just fun-loving, weird eccentric. <laughs> and Gaia is... I don't know m- m- not much about Kaya, but he seems she seems like a mixture of Saka and Ang. I feel like, like yeah, she she she's probably some someone like Ang. Like you know, I think Kaya's probably her personality is like Ang. Like she she seems like you know like she she seems very happy and very like you know like <laughs> kind of like Ang. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. This is just my like you know the way I I I kind of gathered but i'm sure like I'm, I'm i'm very much you know like no i can understand that tenzin is just like katara tenzin is just like katara as far as i've ga- like you know noticed him and like you know followed him up on until this time he's just like katara <laughs> so yeah anyways um so yeah then and then we meet those three and you know like and then that whole thing with uh Korra happens Korra's like oh i want to like, you know i'm i'm bored of airbending this and that and I want to do this, I want to do that, and all that stuff. And then we go to the Southern Air Temple. We meet this guy here, um, Korra's dad's brother, that is Korra's uncle. Uh, his name is something with you? I don't know. Oh my god, so many people got introduced, I forgot their names. Anyways, uh, Korra's uncle, I'm going to call him that for now, unless and until I'm more accustomed with his name. <laughs> Korra's uncle, and there's these two other twins, I think, the, 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 the two children. One of them is a guy, so it's like a brother and a sister. So yeah, and okay, and then they, they're in, in the Southern Water Tribe, and oh, there was that, that section as well where Asami goes to that guy, that another eccentric guy who just, who was like levitating, trying to levitate, and he seems like a fun guy, you know, like he's just... <laughs> It's kind of another eccentric, you know, like, and he just like was doing some weird stuff, and he even said that okay, I'll help you out, Asami, and uh, <laughs> everything kind of went well, I guess, and <clears throat> yeah, and then there was that that feast where um, Korra's uncle he starts talking about how like you know like the traditions are being compromised this and that he starts talking about how like oh back in my day we used to do this we used to do that and now no one's like you know respecting anything this and that like, he he seems like that type of a person who's just like you know just uh, like you know just 
a prisoner of traditions and like you know and 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 the things that they used to do all that stuff you know uh he seems like that type of a person and 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 i, I think probably Kora's dad is a lot more um what do you call it uh like tries to do a lot other things like is not shackled by the past like you know whatever i we used to do back in our days not shackled by that it seems some something like that and <clears throat> anyways so yeah and that was that and there was that then then it was there was that scene with marco and cora them you know in the in the festival and like <sighs> And Cora starts acting like a kid. Like I don't know what happened. And I, you know what? I feel like she. she I don't know. Like aren't we? Aren't we supposed to have gone past all this? You know, like Cora's like, character developed quite nicely. I really liked it. I even said in in the final episode, in episode twelve, that yeah, I really like Cora. Like you know, like she she was kind of there at the beginning, but she kind of changed, and I really like her now. I said that like i even said that yeah like why i don't know why people don't like uh, you know cora like this is really great but this episode i feel like all the character development just went just vanished disappeared and she's like back at the start again like just like in the beginning of like in the first season first two episodes where she was like oh i can do everything like as again as i said like i know like um this is like a very like what can i say like this comparison but she reminds me of boruto like I know Bodo came a lot later than Cora, I know that. But still, I am making a comparison here. She's she's like Boruto. Like I don't know what to say, but yeah. Like and and I I feel like I feel like she, we went past all that and probably like you know like that's why I was saying I was like it feels like the first season was like the whole story like you know like Cora went through a character development the enemies are dead and everything is okay now Cora knows. Um, uh, like you know goes can go to the avatar state and then we're back at the start line again Korra's like you know character development all just vanished in this episode i feel like anyways um okay and then the spirit comes in and Korra tries to fight it and now i can un kind of understand Korra got fascinated by you know that that guy's power how he was able to control it but obviously that's no way to talk to your teacher Tenzin and your dad like that he she was like oh you do, guys can't do anything why should I listen to you like no that's not how the world works like obviously people are accustomed to like you know like fighting something and handling something an enemy that Tenzin might feel easy to fight this guy this this guy who calmed the spirits he might have found uh, like it, it difficult to fight like it's, it's this this thing called like you know I'm I'm better at something than someone else like everyone cannot like you know do something as good as someone else like that's why you know like we learn from different people gain gather our experiences from different people because there are people who are better at something than the other so i like here's number one thing that like i really like this is the one thing that i hated about Korra in this episode the way he blamed tenzin at that not blamed but kind of said that oh you cannot do anything like why should i you know like i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to learn my bending from this guy this random stranger uh i guess he's he's not a stranger he's his uncle she he's her uncle but still like you know like i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to like you know learn from him now and just like you know goes says that yeah we don't uh, like you know i don't want to learn from you anymore like that was the thing that i really disliked about this episode like what happened up until now you were like you know like tenzin has been teaching you and this is how you repay him like what the hell like that's number one <clears throat> like he she, she's acting like a little kid now i don't even know how how age is cora even she's probably like 17 18 or something i, I think so <clears throat> But yeah, like obviously Tenzin did not like that. Like obviously, like you know, like and Tenzin was like, "All right, do whatever the hell you want to. I'm off." <laughs> and he, he just like I feel really bad for Tenzin here. Like he was so sad and everything. Like thank God, like you know, his siblings kind of <laughs> are going to have company him, and they're going to have a nice family vacation, I guess. Um, in in the like you know. Yeah, in the air temple, air, air temple, Sky and Bumi went with him. That's good. And uh, yeah, let's let's just just leave Cora alone for now. Like she needs to 
calm down and actually understand what she did wrong. Like, and then she says, like, you know, I think, oh, who did, does she say that to? I think Marco, yeah. She's like, did I do the right thing? And Marco's like, yeah, you, you did the right thing. You have to trust yourself. Like, I'm like, yeah, obviously she did the right thing. She did the right thing by just, you know, denying someone who has been training her for up until now. And just like, you know, saying that, oh, you, 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 you're not good enough for me. Like, that's what she did. That's definitely the right thing she did. Great, Marco. Oh, like, I don't know. And here's another thing that I felt extremely weird about this episode. The Avatar state had fallen. What happened to the Avatar state? The Avatar state was supposed to be this amount of, like, you know, strength where you, if you go into that state, you know, you can just, like, you know, like, just do anything. Remember the, the final ep episode where Aang went into the Avatar state and just, just washed. You know, just, just, he just, just, <laughs> one-sidedly just beat Ozai up in that manner. Ozai, that guy who, like, and, and even the meteor, like, you know, that, that, and, and that thing, uh, like, Sozin's comet was there. And Ozai was already so strong. And going into the Avatar state, and just, just destroyed Ozai. That was the power level. What happened to the Avatar state? I think, I think most probably, like, Kakora thinks that she can go into the avatar state that is probably the key I think she probably did not unlock everything you know like like this is not supposed to be the avatar state she just like was making a tornado and just firing like you know like doing firebending that's not the avatar state the avatar state is supposed to be like 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 a natural disaster not natural disaster I'm saying that 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 amount of damage you can do with it like we saw avatar the last airbender I feel like she and Korra probably like you know does not realize this but I think that's not all to the avatar state like if 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 she had the same amount of power as Aang had in the final season the final episode I think she could have probably easily taken care of that spirit I don't know this is just my guess you know because I feel like the avatar state was extremely weakened in this episode I don't know like these these are all that I think now like let's watch the next episode and you know like um, let's see what happens like I'm I'm not happy with the first episode at all I don't know what the hell happened I'm sorry like I'm I don't know like you know like I don't know how other people took this episode or am I really being too overly critical or something if i am then i apologize but i this is just how i feel after watching the first episode like it feels like all the character development and everything just just disappeared in this episode and it, it it's it's just a mess again <sighs> my god anyways let's start this is episode number two of uh, the legend of korra uh, let's get started so i'll be putting in the subtitles and the time you're here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three Two, one, go. <clears throat> I really hope this guy, this uh, uncle, Korra's uncle, doesn't turn out to be someone like Tarlock. Like, I'm getting immense Tarlock vibes from him. <laughs> I really hope he's a nice guy. I hope that. Una lock, okay. Yeah, good for them. Just go on a vacation. Just leave Quora alone for now. No, she won't be able to restore if she does stuff like this. I don't know. I'm 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 really angry at Quora. Oh what the Yeah. Okay. Oh. I, you know what? I, I feel like Cora's going to be heavily disappointed. Oh boy. Okay, I feel like she won't be happy that much. 
Okay, nice. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Uh, but Sean. Nah. <laughs> yeah, we're on a vacation. Damn, they're ready. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, nice. My God. <laughs> the next generation. <laughs> what the? Pocky. Pocky's not happy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god yo <laughs> yeah um kaya seems like she's a waterbender isn't she i think boomy is probably like an earthbender or something This is a very weird relationship. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This Marco and Koras. Why? Oh my god. How? What is wrong? Oh my god. Everstorm? What? Yeah. Una lock. Oh, Bolin is here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh, damn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you eat it. Seems like fun. <laughs> wow. Spirit border. Okay. Okay. Alright, sounds easy enough. <clears throat> mm. Alright. Okay, I guess. Oh my god, these spirits. Okay. Yep, more spirits. Let's just ignore them, or maybe not, yeah. <laughs> mm. 
Well, you know, like just said, there is no nothing called dark spirits. Like, all right. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. What? Oh. Okay, something probably happened. Because? Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Okay, so... 20 years oh is this was this during the fire nation oh no 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 this is a lot later yeah this is a lot later Hmm. Oh, maybe he did something to the forest. Oh my god. Oh boy, yeah, that's what they did. Oh my god. Yeah, and that's why the spirits are not happy with him. Yeah. Oh boy. Yep. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's when the, the brother, Unalak, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess that's why Unalak does not like. Okay. Like, obviously, he did not know that this would be the consequences, you know? No, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Bolin. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh great. You know what? Just leave her alone for a few days. Like, I guess that's what you need to do in, in this. Hmm. Is there an ang statue here? Oh no! Oh my god! Don't break the statues! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Okay, there you go. There's Ang. That's Ang, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that is Ang. Whoa, what's happening? Hmm. God. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh. Also, this is the Everstorm. Or. My God, look at this. <clears throat> wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yo. I'm just taking that stuff. <coughs> oh my god, this these these things can fly. Come on, Unalak. Use your um where is he? Oh no 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 no! Oh, he's she's trying to do that thing. I don't think that's working. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, there you go. No! <laughs> These two just sitting. <laughs> but the bike is gone. Damn. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh. All right. <laughs> it's Babu. Yes. <laughs> mm. oh, come on. Ah. Okay, okay, I guess <laughs> The whole thing with Marco is kind of funny now like uh, Oh my great <laughs> Bowling Oh, oh my god! Oh. 
Hmm. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't even know what to do. What is this? You have to believe what the hell? She doesn't know what to do. What's she supposed to do? Right. She she wants to be independent. Wow. Oh my god. Oh! My god. Damn, what are these things? Like snakes? Oh my... Oh, okay. Damn. Oh, this is the thing, okay. Oh yeah, what happened with them? Like, I think she saw Aang or something? Wait, who's that? Okay. Um... Okay, whoa. Oh my god, there's a lot of... Okay, what do we do now? I don't think that's how you open portals? <laughs> Just... Oh! What is this? Okay, she's in, in the avatar state. Okay, there you go. That's how you open portals. All right. Uh, oh, nice. So we did it. Oh, what is this? It's like they're like connected or something. The, you know, like I feel like. Okay, so everything's okay now. I hope. <laughs> it's crying. So. Everything's okay now? All right. Hope there's no more complications after this. <laughs> oh my God. This girl is crazy. Yo.
Oh, this is the first step. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you should be sorry. God, look like the way she was acting. I hope everything's fine now. Uh, and he did say it's the first step, so. Okay. What? What? What are these? What's happening? What? What? I don't like how this is going. What's he going to do with so many ships? Okay, well... Another episode of Korra being a complete brat, I guess. And uh, yeah, I don't know how long this will actually continue. I really hope she, she actually realizes what she's doing is completely wrong. Like, you know, the way she's behaving with the other people. Like, that's just completely wrong. People make mistakes and you should actually, <clears throat> you know, like, like why, why is Korra actually judging him? her dad for like you know some mistake that he did for even when she was not born and like you know like she, she she's just saying that oh you are you're keeping everything from me you know like you, you're saying that you want to give me freedom but you're actually confining me this that blah 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 like why why again like i i am i'm really not like you know happy with this sudden like you know the, the way she's behaving suddenly in season two and this is weird you know like i don't know like characters are supposed to get through one character development and get better it feels like she went through one character development got better and she reverted back to the same place again and now she needs another character development like what is even happening like, a first, like, she needs to grow up first, in my opinion. Like, like the way she's behaving, it's, it's very, very wrong. And, like, like, I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so, now, here's the thing. I don't know the whole thing with Unalak. I feel like she, he has some other plans or something. I don't know. Like, I feel like the, the way he's doing stuff is kind of weird. And... I don't know what his actual plan is. I feel like he's also hiding something. Like, I mean, he, he's not telling everything. Like, like funny thing, it, it seems like he, you know, he, he actually, like, you know, he was blaming uh, his brother for stuff and told Cora that, oh, your dad didn't say everything to you, did not reveal each and everything to you. While I feel like he's also doing the same thing. You know, like, it's probably keeping something from Cora not saying everything because the last scene was really weird like it feels like they're like going into a war or something you know like they have like this many ships like it, it, like it really in, in the beginning i thought like someone attacked or something i was like what's happening did the fire nation attack again <laughs> that's what i felt and then i then he said that oh these are actually the northern water tribe ships and like okay so these are actually their ships i guess so <laughs> Like, I don't know, I feel like it's like he, he has some other plans, which is, which is he's not telling to Korra. And there will be some kind of revelation, I guess, in the future, where Korra will realize, like, yeah, she has been acting like some child. Like, she is a child, I guess. Like, what can I say? But still, like, my god. Like, first he, he, he pushes away Tenzin, then she pushes away his, her dad. And I don't know, like, what would happen. Probably in the few next few episodes, he's going to push away uh, Marco as well. Like, I, I guess that's how this is going to go. I, I, I don't know. Like, she, she wants to be so independent that she, she doesn't even want anyone, like, you know, to be with her. 
like that's like typical like this is like in the, the thing you know like where where ch- children doesn't like you know like unless and until they go through something they they won't understand like you know this this thing like you know like this this like type of attitude this type of rebellious phase you know if you, if you call this a rebellious phase it's it's very like you know like she she has gotten everything from her childhood like you know she had a loving family she she like you know she had friends she had everything and that's why she's just trying to throw every like you know just push aside everything and she's acting as if like she wants to, and she needs to be independent that's wrong you know like people like the things that she has gotten a lot of people doesn't have the privilege of getting that ang was all alone you know when she came when he came into the world you know he was all alone ang and had no one except katara and saka they were his only family like you know like his whole like you know like the the whole air nomads were gone everything were attacked and and like you know like i think like they these type of people actually appreciate stuff more unlike cora who has gotten everything you know like training and good friends good family good people and and that's why she's acting like a like you know rebellious kid now that and she's like oh i want to be independent yeah you don't teach me anything you shelter me you this that and it's like she's acting like that i feel like like what is this oh my god like <clears throat> like <laughs> I feel like this I feel like Korra Legend of Korra is more drama. Like that's what I feel like. Like this is like like a full on drama show. I don't know. I I I feel really weird. <laughs> but the story is nice. I'm really liking the story. I'm I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. I'm I'm really liking the story. But these things are actually stuff that are really kind of what can I say like annoying me, and I know this is kind of going to go away. I'm sure Cora will understand something as uh, the episodes go on. She's going to realize what she did wrong, and probably she's also going to like you know come out of that, and you know like probably ap- apologize, and a lot of things might will probably happen after this. She's going to understand her mistake, but but that process, I I feel like. Look, we actually went through this whole thing and then we're again doing the same thing all over again like season one her character development feels like something that was useless like she went through a character development and now it's like she's back to square one and these things are some things that are actually kind of bothering me otherwise it's it's a great story like i'm i'm really liking this premise as well like this whole thing with the spirits i'm liking this no, and we went we we're going to like a complete different thing and there's like a little secret going on as well with with uh with the girl um Tenzin's daughter i don't i forgot her name you know i feel like there's something going on there as well as she goes to that air temple and she sees weird visions like it's kind of interesting i'm i'm liking this but Cora's attitude is kind of annoying me now i feel like and i think it's going this is going to continue for a couple of more episodes after which she'll probably realize what what she did wrong and yeah anyways okay so here in this episode Cora and Unalak I think that was his name like they <clears throat> like I feel like Unalak is like you know actually using Cora for something some kind of her his own agenda I don't know you know like it, it's like she he's acting like oh I'm doing this for your betterment but she just wants her to do things you know i don't know i might be wrong though <clears throat> that's why i said like i felt like he's he's kind of like tarlock he's i i doubt he's completely evil like tarlock i feel like he's probably like a, a type of character who is like you know he's like uh what can i say who's doing stuff for like you know his his own northern water tribes good but in that process he might be actually like you know, doing some bad things i think he's probably that type of character you know what tarlock was also doing something like that i guess you know he was actually i i don't know yeah but he feels different than tarlock but at the same time he kind of kind of feels similar to tarlock as well like you know he oh yeah he he's not as pompous as Tarlok. tarlock was the like, prideful pompous and like you know that type of a character he's not that he he seems very like you know uh, what can i say kind of stoic and uh you know like kind of what can i say more settled down type of a character 
but th th this is like you know stuff that he is hiding i feel like which kind of reminds me of tarlock just like how he was like you know hiding stuff and using Korra for his own agenda i feel like that's kind of going on in the background i might be wrong though completely you know this is just my speculation who knows anyways yeah okay so uh, in the beginning like you know they they start on their journey while um tenzin and his family you know like boomy and um uh what's her name kaya i think that was her name they they go to the air temple and everyone's like you know like like oh tenzin uh, like you know master tenzin's here and uh like you know um, uh lady pema is here as well like and then <laughs> boomy and kaya they're like oh i'm sorry i thought you were servants <laughs> and they're like no i'm the brother and sister oh my god ah uh and uh, so okay so i i guess uh pema is a waterbender uh, not pema sorry um uh, well, kaya kaya i think that's her name or kea what, was her name kaya or was her name kea i don't know um like you know she she's a waterbender as far as like I, I think like her clothing is also like that and i think boom is probably like an earthbender or something who knows so yeah Okay, anyways, um, yeah, that happens, and then, like, you know, like, we see, like, Korra's dad, she also wants to go alongside them, uh, and Korra, obviously, like, you know, like, all rebellious kid, she's like, oh, I don't want you, you know, like, accompanying me, this, that, leave me alone, I want to be independent, all that stuff, and then Bolin comes in, like, kind of lightens the mood, <laughs> I'm really, I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative of Bolin, you know, like he, he, like all these type of situation, he, he kind of comes in and lightens the whole mood, and <laughs> I'm like, thank God he's here. <laughs> like he comes in and he's like, oh look at this jacket, <laughs> you know, emergency rations and like you know a heater and like you know I, I, I can even like you know <laughs> survive in like a one month uh, emergency situation i'll be okay and then there's that those two like you know like siblings the girl and the the boy like <laughs> i feel like the girl is like a really <laughs> i don't know obsessive type of a character like <laughs> later on when she she hugs cora she's like oh <laughs> don't like, no initiating uh you know contact with another like you know like with the female gender or something like that she said my god <laughs> these two siblings are weird <laughs> they're kind of eccentric in a way you know like the way they, they're doing things <laughs> it's kind of funny oh boy okay anyways um <laughs> okay and then they go start going to the you know like the the on their journey and here's uh, they kind of take a break and here's where we get to know the uh, uh you know their past uh Korra's dad's past he says how he you know destroyed the spirit uh you know forest that's why the spirits got angry and you know started destroying the whole tribe and the dad uh, banished him now here's the thing um I'm sure he d did not realize that that's what's going to happen. I, mean, I don't know. I, I think probably it was something like that. Like he he probably got cocky or something. Not cocky, but he probably tried to capture those guys, those people who attacked them. And in that process, like I'm sure like people warned him about like don't go in that forest, you know, don't do anything to the forest. But I'm sure he probably got a little bit overconfident or something. And that's why he destroyed the place and thought that okay nothing will come off it and that's just i i guess that's like that was his mistake and that like you know like had a, like you know everlasting consequences and that's when he realized that yeah i've done something wrong and it's interesting that he actually says to cora that you are walking the same path as i am which is correct you know like i feel like he like the way he probably got cocky and like you know destroyed the uh, spirit uh, forest even though people probably told him not to do that you know like um and he realized that a lot late and actually like you know understood that yeah i made a mistake later on and that's why he changed that's basically what's happening to cora now i think she's also acting very overconfident and cocky and she's like oh i don't need anyone i'm going to do whatever the hell i want to and this and that i won't listen to my father i won't listen to tenzin unalak is my new best friend and like that's basically what's happening here and that's what his dad actually her dad actually warned her about he's like you're walking the same path as i am don't do that you're going to regret it 
But yeah, obviously he won't, she won't listen. And I feel like the same similar thing is going to happen to Korra here. She's probably going to make a mistake, which actually have everlasting consequences. And after that, it's like, you know, after like, you know, getting whacked in her face, she's going to realize what mistake she did. And when he realizes that, there, there won't be anyone beside her, you know? And <clears throat> that's probably what's going to happen, I feel like. But yeah, anyways, and she, she's like, you know, she starts like, you know, blaming her dad. She's like, oh, you are like always hiding stuff from me. You were saying that everything's from my protection, this, that. And uh, this is another thing, you know, I feel like there's also a part of like fault with uh, uh, Cora's dad as well, where like, you know, they, they're overly protective of her. I guess they did everything for her, like, you know, uh, good. And just like how, like, you know, like, and Unalak is taking advantage of that. He was like, oh, you didn't, like, you know, Aang, uh, Avatar Ang went through a journey, you know, like, uh, but your father and Tenzin wanted to just confine you to one place. And, you know, like all these things he's taking advantage of now. And this is another thing. I feel like this should go both ways, you know, like, Korra's dad should have talked with her. You know, whatever problem was, he should have come clean. And th that's why, like, you know, like, like he, he's saying like he's doing everything. Like this, this one thing I'm kind of like, you know, with Cora now. You know, this one thing I, I agree with Cora. He should have actually told Cora about everything and not hidden stuff like that. Like that's a fault on his part, I feel like. Like, you know, they, they, they're like saying like, oh, everything is for your protection. And, you know, like obviously Cora is going to get mad at that. So this this is like you know his fault in my opinion like he didn't he should have come clean with Cora, but yeah I guess like you know every father or every will will be kind of like this like won't want their ch child to get mixed up in these type of situation, and like you know that's why you know hide stuff from them. So yeah and kind of backfired. Cora is like yeah I don't you know like you go away I'm not going anywhere this and that, and. Yeah, and then the spirits attack again. Like, there's a little fight scene. And... <coughs> Bolin was... <coughs> Bolin's, like, you know, emergency thing. Activated. Which helped her out. Uh, helped, helped him out in the... <laughs> long run, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay, and then they come to the forest. And... <coughs> Unalak is like, Go ahead, Cora. You have to do it. Nobody will go with you, this and that. And Cora's like, oh, like, you know, I actually, like, these, these type of, like, you know, <laughs> things actually kind of, <clears throat> this thing kind of annoyed me. Like, these type of, what can I say? <clears throat> things, like, wh which Cora says, she's like, oh, I, I forgot how it is like when actually people trust in you because no one trusts me. Like, like, what type of, like, you know, like, she, she's acting like some kind of tragic, like, you know, like, character in some story or something. Like, like, what, what, like, what is this? What type of behavior is this? Like, like, she's acting as if, like, you know, his uncle, like, an Unalak is, like, her, like, you know, I don't know, like, some person that, like, as I said, like, you know, it's like Unalak is, is her now best friend. And all the people who actually supported her up until now, his, her dad, um, um, uh, Denzin, everyone, they're, they're her enemies. You know, they have been hiding things from her. That's why, like, Unalak is her best friend now. And she is like, oh, Unalak, you know, like, you trust me so much. Nobody trusts me. Boo-hoo. Like, like, these things, these things are, are, are things that are actually annoying me about Korra now, like, I guess. But I guess she did her job. Like, <laughs> like she did accomplish the thing that she was supposed to do. She went and kind of did that whole thing with the spirit. Now, I don't know what's happening. This is kind of connected to the temple, air temple. That the girl, I think Jinora, that's her name. Um, Tenzin's daughter, she, she like saw something in, in, in another, like, you know, like a vision and she like saw some statue which does not look like Aang at all, you know, in her dream. Like th that statue was Aang's statue, I think. But in her dream, she saw some other statue and it started glowing as soon as Korra, like, you know, <clears throat> released the spirits or whatever she did there. <clears throat> now, obviously, I, it's very apparent that those two are connected somehow. I don't know. I feel like Korra probably unlocked something that's 
<laughs> like you know like that's probably going to be some kind of a big problem later on i feel like that's what happened you know she did something like that and as i said unalak is hiding something from her so i i guess she maybe maybe he's like you know like actually manipulating cora to do something that he wants like in her his own twisted form of justice you know he's probably doing something in his own twisted morality system where he thinks that yeah everything's going to be fine if i do it like this but it's probably not and it's kind of like tarlock so yeah i don't know and i, I feel like and, and then like you know the, the final scene and where um like it's actually weird this whole situation it feels like everything is going okay but there's still this nagging thing in my in the in the back of my head where i feel like it it, it seems as, as if everything is okay but it's not something is happening there's like this feeling within me the last scene was very suspicious i don't know what happened there she, they, they go to that place and it's like this amount of shifts just you know like coming and and as i said i thought like someone attacked them or something i'm like what's happening is this like a new war or something but then he says that that's like water tribe uh, southern uh, okay this thing okay um this part uh, they go to that place okay there you go what are all your northern troops doing here this line actually makes me realize these are water like you know northern troops actually B before that i thought they were being attacked or something <laughs> okay here you go and that's where unalak says opening the spirit portal was the first step in getting the southern water type back on its righteous path there's more difficult work to be done before our two tribes are truly un united and this 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 feels really suspicious i feel like he's he has his own twisted way of thinking something and she's trying to do something this is going to probably i don't know like he's hiding something and that that, that much i'm pretty sure about and whatever he's hiding it's, it's not good and he, he's basically probably just using cora to get the job done or something but yeah and that was it that was this episode i really hope cora actually on but i know i know like, i don't know like like you know understands after this and realizes the mistake he did and hopefully he apo she apologizes later on because the way she's treating everyone now is very uncomfortable i'm i'm feeling very bad for tenzin for her dad everyone that she's treating like this like this is ungrateful in my opinion especially for tenzin like the guy who actually like you know like trained you so much and this is how you repay him <sighs> anyways so that's it so that was this episode this was episode number two of the legend of Korra book two so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of Korra book two until then goodbye and have a nice day.